to uh, continue on with the next step. And so our next step in the solving, we've done single step equations, we've done two step equations, and now we're going to do, I don't know, multi step equations, whatever you want to call them. So this is just an example. 2x plus 3 plus 4x plus 7 minus 4 is 9 x minus 7. If I can get all that on there. That was so long, it's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, this is going to end up being the same thing as what you just finished doing in about half a second. At first, it looks like something almost completely different, and you're going to have to understand a whole lot of different things. But um, these equations, such as this, are very, very similar to the ones you just finished working on. It takes about one step to get them down to uh, the same thing you just finished doing. Uh, the, the big, well, actually two steps, I guess. Um, the first thing is we want to kind of take care of like terms. And you've got to understand about this chasm right here, uh, or valley, or Grand Canyon, whatever you want to call it, because that's a big deal. I've got a lot of like terms. All the x's are like terms and all of the constants are like terms. But the 2x and the 4x can combine in a whole lot different way than they combine with the 9x. Sooner or later I want to get them all together at some point in time, but I can't do that immediately because of the equal sign. They're on different sides of the balance scale. If your algebra teacher talked about it in terms of uh, balancing things and keeping the equation uh, equal and balanced, but however you want to think about it, these combine very easily. 2 and 4 very easily make 6, and 3 and 7 very easily make 10. And the 9x minus 7 is still just kind of sitting there. It hasn't anything to do. It's just kind of waiting. It's waiting its turn. It's like, okay, I've got to wait till the left side of the equation gets its act together before the right side of the equation can uh, do anything. Now sometimes it's a mess on the right side and not on the left. Sometimes it's a mess on both sides. It just depends on the problem and you have to use a little bit of creativity and understanding just like you did today. You couldn't treat every one of those problems uh, the same. Sometimes the x is on the right, sometimes it's on the left, sometimes it's in different situations. So at this point I want to get the variables together and I still want to get the constants together. And you can do it whatever way you want to. Most people, it seems, coming from Algebra 1, always want to put the variables on the left and the constants or the numbers on the right. That's fine. You can always do that. In that case, they would subtract 9x and subtract 10. Um, for me, I'm looking at it, I usually like to have the, the x be positive for some reason. I subtract better that way. Uh, I don't have to deal with as much negatives in the problem if necessary. So for me, what I usually look at is to think, hmm, if I said 9 minus 6, I'll get a positive, but if I say 6 minus 9, I'm going to get a negative. That's just me. And so I say, you know what, I am going to move the 6x over here like that. Now once I decide where I'm putting my variables, so I have now decided then I'm going to put my variables over here on the right, getting rid of the variables over here on the left. Then that requires that I'm going to have to put the numbers on the left. I can't have them on the same side. It happens to a lot of people. They end up moving everything to one side, and then they forget that that's going to make a zero, and then they realize that they shouldn't have done that because now they've got to put them back. So just realize that whatever side you decide to put the variables on, the numbers have to go to the other side. The variables don't have to always go on the right, but if that's the way you like to do it, there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to have to add 7 to both sides, which is going to get rid of the numbers over here, which is what I wanted, and it puts them all on the left side. So 10 plus 7 is 17. 9 minus 6 is 3x and I'll divide. Just to be different, these to uh, get you thinking about some other things, is for this next quiz that you'll have on this, you're going to round to the tenth instead of the hundredth. No big deal. In fact, a little easier. You only need two decimals. 
Look at the second, decide whether you're going to change the first. Instead of needing three decimals, look at the third, decide if you're changing the second. So when I divide this, I find out that x is 5.666 whatever. So if I'm going to round to the tenth, then I have to look at the hundredth. I need to look at the second decimal. That second decimal is five or larger. Therefore, it's going to change the six to a seven. So let's look at that briefly again. We started here, remembering that our job at first is to get the like terms together, but I just can't combine them all. I can't just say nine plus four plus two. The equal sign makes my life more difficult than I would like it to be, but it's still not crazy difficult. So I went ahead and combined like terms on the left. Two and four made six, three and seven made 10. Those things on the right just kind of sat there and waited. I decided I was going to put the variables on the right, which therefore requires that I'm going to put the numbers on the left. So I subtracted 6x on both sides, got rid of the variables, put them on the right. Added 7, got rid of the numbers, put them on the left. We're rounding to the tenth at this point, so when I divided, I looked at the second number to decide what to do about the, the first number. It's five or larger, I had to round up. Questions on that? Now,